book nerds welcome to the book nerds podcast uh i am uh, a huge horror fan and i don't get an opportunity to you know host horror authors uh, you know too often it is uh, such a pleasure uh, to have you hari on the podcast thank you so much thank you so much book nerds the entire community for having me here and i'm really really excited to be here yeah and i okay. absolutely yeah. love where you're sitting right now <laughs> thank you thank you i think that i can and see i'm i'm dreading i'm dreading the ambience you have got there because no, it's, it's always already... dark here it's always dark here you know they were saying it's always dark here in uh, you know horror world <laughs> oh my gosh okay so we are here to uh, talk about this book right here i'll try to show it closely and of course at the end i will uh, uh perhaps show the cover by sharing my screen as well uh, somehow the book didn't reach me uh in the okay. physical manner i mean okay I mean, amazon whatever anyways so we are going to talk about dakhma uh it's by k hari kumar of course uh, uh for those of you who are not aware about uh, hari's work uh he is a novelist and a screenwriter so that's uh very cool he is of course the author of india's most haunted uh and is working on a hindi horror web series for a leading ott platform we'll ask him more about that and of course a malayalam film uh congratulations a lot is going on and that's a description from 2 years ago <laughs> oh my gosh you oh should have gosh. done some search on wikipedia oh i i, <laughs> I think so i think everywhere i mean yeah even on amazon it's written like this but amazon, that's a description yeah amazon yeah, no, that's a that's a description from Two years ago. So this OTT and, thing is—is yeah. is it Brahm? Is it Brahm? The one you have? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brahm was yeah. the one. This mention. I was yeah. wondering because it is already out. Uh, it's the already out. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. ones that are not out, I can't even talk about it right now because there's a contract <laughs> binding me from talking about it. So yes. yeah. Okay, so Amazon has sucked twice uh, before even we get started. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. so you can of course buy the book from uh, a bookstore near you. uh let me yeah, start the book is there. first i read the book yeah thank you so much for that yeah and uh, the title was uh, quite uh, you know uh, different i was uh, even halfway through the book i was like wondering where is the title you know taking us here uh, of course this genre has got its own tropes we'll talk about uh, that later but tell us about this genre a little bit first psychological psychological thriller slash horror you know where does this all kind of you know uh, work out uh first of all the title of this book it's very symbolic at least till the first or the till the end of the second act actually yes if you look at the book you never actually see a real dakma or the tower of silence until yeah. you reach you know page number 200 or something because yes. i'm actually using this in a very metaphorical way in a symbolic way because it's that's it's that it's a protagonist state of mind the rot that she is stuck with in her life that we are we all are actually we're all you know stuck in in a life we are all you know running away from the demons of the past and and they keep coming back as scavengers you know to hunt us down yeah, yeah. there are rotting secrets from the past and all those things so that's how that the that's a symbolic symbolic meaning of this title and that's the reason why it doesn't really show up until the 200th page anyway when it comes to horror you know thriller horror since we are talking horror i'd rather bring a very simple word here fear you know it's the most basic the most human and most natural emotion you know jab hum chote the i'll be using a bit of hindi here and there uh, sure. when we were little jab hum bacche the most of us were afraid of the dark even aaj right. hum deny kar sakte hain but you know i to love i embrace the darkness but there are people <laughs> you know even as a kid I, i i was very afraid of the dark okay and yes. many of us were afraid that you know there were monsters under our bed under our bed yeah right and we wouldn't even you know hum try bhi nahi karenge we won't even try to look under the bed you know when it's dark when your mom has switched off the lights and she's gone out of the room you won't Yeah. even dare to look under the bed because of yeah. fear and then few of us few of us you know would make sure that we pray to an invisible entity to deliver us from the evil that came with this that comes with the darkness you know that's right. how religion is born 
I won't get yeah. into that topic right now. Uh, so another day or another book. Okay. And sometimes this fear grows in you, you know. Yeah. And it can even become a phobia at some point when we become adults. But yeah. most of the time, you know, this fear, it is for the unknown. Yeah. Mostly associated with the darkness, death, or rather what happens after death. Yeah. The root cause of all this fear is that. And this yeah. results in the fear of facing this particular emotion alone. Yeah. Right. And then there is a the fear of the known. Fear that those who are closest to you are the real living monsters, the living yeah. horror. Yeah. For example, if you take the case of a 25-year-old boy or a girl in the city, it's that annoying auntie who keeps bombarding you with the questions, Ki, shadi kar, kab karo ke beta? and all those things. You know, That's also yeah. kind of a fear, even if it's in a fun way or irritating way. Yes. Right? But yes. it's a kind of a fear. Okay. Yeah. And everyone has a fear. What varies is the degree. For some, it may be zero. For some, it may be 100. And for yeah. some, it may be beyond repair. That's when it becomes yeah. paranoid. Yeah. And fear, my friend, yeah. defines horror, the genre. Yeah. And the art of writing horror is all about nurturing this fear yeah. and putting the character in a world or a setting that kindles this basic human emotion called fear. Right. Now, there's a very good reason why I use the word character and not reader. Yeah. Because every reader is different. Every reader is a different individual. We have to respect that. We have to understand that. I cannot objectively see that everybody will be afraid of, you know, after reading my book. Yeah. Yeah. Because for you, fear might be different. For your yeah. partner, it may be different. For me, yeah. it is different. Yeah. Right. So how do I scare all of you? Yeah. A, at least to the same, same extent. How do I do that? Right. I do that by identifying the fact you all may be different. Every reader yeah. may be different. But the thing in your hand which that you're reading, the book, the horror yeah. story, it's the same. The characters, they are the same. So I work. I nurture the fear of the character. And when yeah. the reader at some degree starts associating with this fear, yeah. that's when you know your horror story is working. That's it. That's the art of writing horror. Yeah. But it is do. interesting, you know, Hari, Hari, it is so interesting because I was like, you know, when I was reading the book, I thought, okay, a lot of, I mean, of course, there is politics uh, blended in and, you know, all of that, which is also a lot of fun for someone like me who is political. Uh, but, you know, I was just waiting. Okay. You, you were just, you know, teasing the reader, you know, you, you, were, you just wanted us to kind of, you know, uh, of course, marinate in this world. And then, you know, the elements start coming in. Is that a trope which is like very uh, you know 2020s uh, is it is it very a modern trope to do that uh, i didn't get your question what, what exactly are you uh, talking the, about are you talking about you know, non horror elements or elements from the reality yeah. in the story yeah, i mean even like when you reach like uh, 50 or 100 odd pages you know it doesn't hit you the horror horror you know you just kind of you know tease us into you know something is going to happen you know, but, you know, it is just that, you know, uh, the way, you know, you present horror, is this the modern way of kind of, you know, the uh, modern, modern rendering of horror these days? I, I think, uh, you know, you have to look at the influences that we have. If you read books from like 20 years ago, what were the influences on those particular writers? Yeah. It's the books and movies that came before that. Yeah. Right. And... At that time, it was mostly supernatural horror. It was all about supernatural entities. Uh, in India, it was mostly about Bhut, Pret, Pishach, and all those yeah. supernatural entities. Yeah. And it was all about exploring that kind of a, of a, of a subset of horror. Yeah. It's now, these days, it's all Netflix. It's all psychological horror. It's more about getting into the head rather than getting into the prosthetics. Yeah. So probably my influence comes from there and I've always been a big, big fan of psychological horror. You know, as a kid, I used to love the uh, mythological concepts and all these yakshis and pretas and all those things. I used to yeah. love them. I, I, was a, I was a junkie for that. And, uh, yeah. But as I grew up, I was more inclined towards, you know, certain other aspects of horror, the real aspects. Yeah. Why, you know, why, what what certain things does to you, what certain yeah. incidents in life, you know, when you yourself go through all those things, yeah. it's only when you go through a trauma that you realize what it can do to you. 
so for dakma again i it's it's inspired from the story of someone who's very close to me okay. not just me but there are other people and somehow i clubbed that and i put it into that emotion and the first part you know the part you were talking about it's part one it's yeah. all about setting up that person's mind right. in this book's case it's anahita anand and anahita anand is my protagonist she is the main character right. and the world needs to associate with her in order to feel for her in the second and third act right hence the time that i've taken teasing right. as you right. rightfully mentioned yeah. i'm just teasing I'm, I'm, it's not teasing basically i'm just setting up that character and i'm just right. making her uh, making the reader understand unse waqif kara raha hu ki ye hai meri character yeah isko in cheezon se dar lagta hai and right. unfortunately this particular character has a lot of fears oh yes we'll talk about the phobias there are too many i suppose uh had a phobia anaita had a phobia of about almost everything right i mean yeah. enclosed spaces uh crowded places heights darkness spiders speaking to strangers germs yeah, uh, yeah. it's basically a blend of generalized anxiety disorder and social anxiety disorder yeah if you put it in a very simple yeah. term it's the blend of these two along with the pho- see i have a phobia which is what appears in that character about enclosed spaces so again right. fear is different i am not afraid of ghosts i am okay i am okay. not afraid of this darkness i am okay but if you put me inside an elevator i am i'm i'm not okay let's not talk about elevators harry we know we all know about that youtube video of that girl getting into the elevator and the documentary <laughs> <laughs> i was just worried when you started writing about the elevator when anahita in one part enters the elevator i was like no this is not happening <laughs> okay so you know i'm glad that you didn't do it uh there's a part in the book i think so on uh, page 71 uh it is mentioned that uh, the 20 story apartment building and it was a setting which was like very interesting for me because you don't expect horror in the middle of sort of the city uh stood under the swiveling blankets of dark gray clouds a uh, burst yeah. of lightning exploded occasionally somewhere far away but the sound mildly diffused into the walls of the bedroom uh the weather was exactly the kind horror writers uh, have overused in literature and cinema but it's st- it still managed to spook people out probably because of something deeply embedded in human genes this is so meta you know you kind of uh, it it is uh, uh, quite fun so what are you trying to kind of achieve here that's what i wanted to know a simple thing the entire story is set in the monsoon i had to give an explanation right <laughs> no on a, on a, on a serious note on a serious note yeah. i uh, see it is true what what is written there is true yeah. somewhere it's embedded in our in our genes yeah. it's not something that has you know come out of thin air why are we afraid of the dark why yeah. are we afraid of the rains is there a good i love the rains because i enjoy it yeah. there are many people who enjoy it but there are many who wouldn't go outside during the rain yeah ask a mother who doesn't want her child to catch a cold right the degree of fear is different but yeah the the, the, the thing is <laughs> the it, the entire story is set in a particular see the, the inspiration for the setting there are two things first thing uh, it's the name anahita which as you have read it it's explained that the actual meaning of anahita is is actually it's it's a, it's a divine figure in a pre-zoroastrian uh, uh, literature Uh, mythology if you want to put it that way and she is the goddess of water she's an angel of water yes sir yeah. of water yeah. so that's the reason i want to get that thing i needed this particular environment and what works better in yeah. mumbai than rain oh yes oh, nothing yes. else works but even even if it's in shimla where we shot drum it was always rain and in fact that's yeah. <laughs> that's something you know in the, in fact my producer he actually asked me this question during the shoot of brahm because you know yeah. uh, we needed this uh, almost 60% of the shoot there was rain at that time so we didn't right. need another this thing a supply of water uh, this thing but there were 40% of the time when you needed it and they were like yaar tune kitna barish kyu dala yaar itna budget over budget ja kam dala kar so yeah i don't know i'm a pure file i don't know i i, I love rain and yeah. uh, maybe that's why i was kind of trying to talk about it why are we running away from rain because most yeah. of us do yeah adit is asking what is the difference in your writing process when you write for screens uh, versus the ott versus sort of you know 
uh, screenwriting versus a uh, novelist in you right so screenwriting and novel writing the big big major difference is in in a novel so screenwriting doesn't really begin from a screenplay it always begins with a story Good. and a novel is that, that uh, is that stage you know it's, it's a stage where you're writing a story a novel is a story which has been evolved and screenplay yeah. also evolves from the story right the only difference is when you're writing for the screen you're visualizing it right what you're seeing when you're writing a novel you are in god mode yeah <laughs> you're not nice. visualizing it you're actually yeah. you can you have this uh, you know when you're writing a novel you know that you can always write what he was thinking about right. it's very easy to write about it the yeah. entire thought whatever is there you can just put it in words wahan pe likh do samajh jayega reader ki ha ye ye ho raha hai wo depression mein but when it comes to a screenplay you can't do yeah. that it's very old school jahan pe wo uh, you know monologue hota hai ya wo ab man ki baat aise voice aur <laughs> how we don't yeah. do that we have yeah. to show it it show yeah. don't tell so that's yeah. the basic difference between screen writing the approach we take for screen writing and the approach yeah. we take for novel writing so yeah. yeah you have to visualize what you're writing you have to get the sounds in so yeah. those are the that's the basic difference when you're writing a novel you play god or kuch nahi hai in in, in fact uh, i'm glad that aditya has asked this question because uh, you know i was wondering for someone hmm. who does both does it become kind of is it tough to kind of you know uh, make partitions uh, because it's just you who is writing both the things no that's what i said it's it starts with the story it starts with the yeah. the bare skeleton and skeleton is a story the concept or whatever you're working on and then uh, like for brahm we started right i started writing the novel so yeah. i was only concentrating on that yeah and uh, everybody has a different style my style is very simple when i'm working on one thing i'm only working on that okay i'm not okay. taking up multiple projects so if it's dakma yeah. i spend 3 or 4 months locked in my room working on dakma if it's brahm right. i'm only yeah. working on that because that kind of helps because you are it's like binging right 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 how it's I, just I mean, if one thing if you are if you are if you are on if you are using netflix or an amazon prime and you yeah. uh, are watching a series you would always prefer to binge it because there you don't lose the, those connections true 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 so it, be- it becomes very tough to kind of take a break and then go back to something it it becomes it never works easy. when you take a break when you come back you might have forgotten something so it's better to always finish what you're doing and then come back and revisit right and, you, right. and that opens up whole new perspectives yeah in fact at uh, one point in the book uh, on page 120 you are kind of uh, uh, being a little trollish I, i should i say okay you you have said that and i thought that you have become where have been trollish you know? uh, yes 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 i have just mentioning one there are many and people have to read the book to know what i'm saying uh, anaita mm-hmm. searched for the writer on google and found his website on the home page he claimed that he had driven away spirits by establishing contact with them through scientific means plenty of fans had commented on his paranormal investigation videos as well and i mean i've been checking out a few uh, of late and uh, some i mean what's your opinion on that uh, because the, it can get dangerous when you get in this sort of territory it is of course playing with the mind of someone what exactly is the question is it dangerous the to write about is that or... it's about par- both actually paranormal investigations and of course uh, your comment on that and it th- of course there is a character dedicated yeah it's a character and there's nothing wrong that i've said there it's just yeah, an yeah. opinion and yeah. secondly secondly it's a opinion of that character it's not my opinion right Yeah. Right, and and I have written a book called India's Most Haunted. It's about haunted places. It's about places, yeah. most of the places that I've visited, and I've written yeah. narratives based on that. And this is a dig on myself. It's he. His name is Hira. Hira is Hari. Yeah. I mean, couldn't you figure it out? <laughs> yeah. I know. Hira, H A R A, H A R A, he goes H A R A, H A R A, H A R A, kar diya. So that's that. Yeah. So yeah. as for the other other thing which you mentioned, and there's another yeah. scene where uh where Meher, my, my hero actually. Yeah. Uh, Meher actually talks about uh, how some people are using this to, you know, uh, are misusing this to take advantage of the vulnerable. And then there are yes. others who are actually doing genuine research. Yes. So I actually justified that there. Yeah. And I'm not saying everybody out there is a fraud. I mean, 
आई मीन दैट वे तो इंडिया में जितने बाबा लोग अभी आज तक आई मीन आई वो सॉरी आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू नेम द चैनल्स बट देयर आर अ लॉट ऑफ बाबा लोग हु आर एक्चुअली गिविंग प्रेडिक्शंस एंड एस्ट्रोलॉजी लेसन एंड ऑल दोस थिंग्स एंड व्हाट व्हाट यू व्हाट डू यू सी अबाउट देम या लेट्स लेट्स टॉक या यू वर सेइंग समथिंग प्लीज नो आई एम जस्ट सेइंग इट्स जस्ट एन ओपिनियन एंड वी शुड बी केयरफुल वी शुड यूज आवर sanity or our our intelligence vivek if you want to say i mean hum apne vivek ko istemal karenge to i think uh, we won't be falling prey to certain yes. kind of people but then yes. there are genuine people who are really because i know some paranormal investigators who are passionate about it and i'm yes. going to say this on record because i know someone very personally and he's very passionate okay. about it the way mm. he goes into those investigations is very diff- different from the approach right. that a uh, Right. this kind of a character takes yeah he goes there because he believes that we can establish a communication there are uh-huh. very there are great you know people who have lived and who had lived who have right. kind yeah. of tried to you know bridge that gap yeah close it it's pretty interesting because uh, like you have also written about you know after visiting these places uh, where is the line between fiction and i mean i suppose everything is fiction till you experience something but uh, where is the line you know pe- uh, pe- a lot of people get influenced by this i mean on youtube and on the internet people actually start believing this right so uh, what's your opinion on that yeah my opinion is that ask questions till there is a valid proof scientific okay. proof okay. i mean i am a skeptical person when it comes to believing something i mean uh, is there life after that i have no idea but i would like to know about it so yeah. what are you doing about that yeah i mean that's the more important question there are people yeah. who are researching that right right so i think uh, everybody should be open to interpretations it it is possible that kal ko koi aake keh de ki you know there is life after death people become ghosts then what will you do you have to accept it if it is proved <laughs> it's just like uh, earth is not flat yes right <laughs> It was a time when we believed that it was this flat. Yeah. So it's cool. all about. I mean, uh, yeah. Whether you want to fall into that bias or not, I mean, that's yes. a, that's a lot of questions. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk about publishing the book because uh, I mean, uh, for horror, I suppose, I mean, uh, most publishers, I mean, get kind of you know, uh, how are we going to you know sort of market this? There are not too many horror writers, to be honest. Uh, mm. Otherwise, we would be kind of you know. Uh, as men i mean if you compare it to say a romance or you know uh, maybe more contemporary i just correct yeah. there are uh, there are not many horror writers in indian english indian of course of course in, indian, english, english. indian english indian english if you go to the regional sites there are plenty okay okay so i need to discover these uh, would you like to tell us uh, some few names so that you know i don't i don't follow all the languages that are in the regional space but i know in malayalam mm-hmm. there are plenty of horror books coming there in hindi there are plenty of horror yeah. books coming but i i can't really comment about what kind of horror it is because most of them yeah. might be old school horror because right. that is what the readers kind of like in those right. spaces so yeah. in malayalam i can talk about malayalam because one of my right. favorite novels is the is a novel called yakshi this was written okay. in the 60s in the 70s or 60s and it's a psychological okay. horror okay. and that kind of horror sells in that particular part of the country because people are right. more rational they are more educated yeah 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 maybe i don't know i mean that could be a reason yeah if you look okay. at it that way supernatural horror doesn't sell that much in the urban spaces it's more in the rural spaces where that kind of horror sells and yeah. indian english is indian english books are mostly read in the uh, towns and the urban areas maybe that's why there is less demand for that kind of a supernatural space maybe right. I mean, could be yeah. we can't predict it actually but you yeah can't. i mean see so, it, it it changes the taste changes right now there's a movie called brahmastra jiska teaser abhi nikla hai yes right yes. the moment it yes. hits the i mean if it becomes a big hit there will be more mm-hmm. people who will be indulging in mythological and sci-fi uh, you know the the crossovers right, right, right. now uska market bahut kam hai yes yes i mean compared to romance which you mentioned yeah, yeah i mean yeah yeah totally yeah, i should uh, let you so, complete the question you are actually in the middle of a question i kind of no worries no worries uh the i the part which i found really interesting because this included a lot of you know uh, uh parsi community and you know uh, those influences uh do you have to really understand a community per se or you can d- just do internet research to you know 
get in those elements because it is a sort of you know sacrosanct uh, sort of space where you kind of you have to think before you know kind of putting all these things in a book because some people i mean you are talking about the tower of silence in fact uh, that's what i'm referring to uh, in the later part of the book and you're talking about uh, stuff which could kind of you know it, it is like uh, the parsis don't cremate their bodies and you know all all these things so uh, what is the kind of you know background homework you need to do to do this see research these uh, i wrote this during the uh, lockdown so there was no going out yeah. so there yeah. were a lot of uh, research material available on certain websites yeah. and uh, some of those materials were like 300 400 pages long yeah. and if you have read the book completely i am just yeah. skimming on the surface because it's not about yeah. the community this is about this particular woman yeah and let me let me be very clear it is this woman story it is not a community story it is not a horror story when it's a woman's story who is going through a lot of emotions and a lot of stress in her life yeah. it's yeah. as simple as that but wherever it was required there were things that i wanted to talk about because i uh, the idea actually came while i was uh, reading a book uh, yeah. called the uh, uh, the book by cyrus mystery yeah the corpse bearers the chronicle yeah. of corpse bearers you mentioned it in the book i suppose also i have i have mentioned because it would be, it would be wrong if i don't mention it because otherwise why suddenly i'm taking interest in this and and then i was doing some research for india's most haunted which was my previous book yeah so i was visiting so i was in bombay uh, developing a script for a, a production house and i was there yeah. and before coming back to my hometown and uh, i was putting up in chennai at that time and uh, yeah. i had one or two days free so i decided to you know uh, thoda ghumu haunted places yeah. because i had to finish the manuscript so i started roaming around so i came to know about or i checked everything that came up on uh, wikipedia because i had to yeah. check these haunted places in bombay i went to mukesh yeah. mills are road everywhere i had one friend or sometimes yeah. i was going alone because i yeah. wanted to know at least i wanted to see how it looked like whether or not i experienced or it's a different thing I and need to be, to be your friend. I am. Re- I really want to be your friend. I, I should, you know, going to a city and you know just checking out these places. I am checking out Zomato. This that is not interesting. I mean, so you know, no, you have to go there. Unfortunately, the pandemic has really. I'm glad India's most haunted happened before the pandemic. Otherwise, mm-hmm. I mean, it would it would have been because you have to be in those places at least to understand how it looks and feels and sounds like. Yeah. only then will you be able to at least to understand the geography yeah right whether or not there's a ghost or not that's a different thing now i that's how i kind of stumbled upon this place called uh, uh, there was an apartment i won't name it there was an apartment complex in uh, in uh, that particular part in uh, bombay and i was very very intrigued and that's how i reached there and then the next location was this tower of silence which was mentioned that it's haunted or something like that Yeah. but since we are not allowed to go inside i just had to yeah. check it out from the outside yeah okay the moment i i arrived there i stood outside the gate and there was a there was a weird calmness which kind mm-hmm. of got inside of i mean i can't really explain how it felt and then yeah. that book which i had read suddenly started making sense to me yeah because i had read that book but i had not visited this particular place yeah. now after re- since i read that book and now i'm coming here now i could i was actually imagining myself inside it and all those things and then suddenly wow. a wave of thoughts started coming in and then i don't know i i just had this idea i mean yeah is it really i mean not that particular tower of silence but yeah. that apartment that was nearby is it haunted does it yeah. affect this and then yeah. the entire thing about the vultures and their extinction all those things yes. Those are things that you really care about. Beautiful elements, I must say. I I should congratulate you on that because that was very visual for me. I mean, those parts that was like, okay, this is now you know a lot of fun. I mean, uh, especially the part two. I would encourage readers to kind of you know, uh, in the beginning you will feel okay. There, I mean, we are all you know brought up on jump scares, so we always are expecting those. And in fact, Bala is asking the same thing. He's asking, does horror always have to be about ghosts? No, never. Yeah, never. See horror. That's what I said. Fear. Yeah. 
<laughs> but the most i mean uh, my greatest inspiration for uh, a horror film or a book is rosemary's baby i always talk about this wherever i am called where i'm wherever i go rosemary's baby is a beautiful beautiful horror story but it doesn't have a ghost it does have the devil and all those references i mean rosemary's baby i mean in fact there are a lot of tributes there are easter eggs in the in the book those are yeah. red dots it is, it is. it's very obvious including the address 7d there is a rosemary living in 7d and anahita yes. lives in 7e <laughs> Yes. So those are the little things that a Rosemary's fan may understand. But Rosemary's Baby is all about a mother, yeah, and her fear. Yeah. The entire horror is about the mother losing her child. Yeah. If you look at Rosemary's Baby, it's not about the ghost or the devil, but it is the one of the greatest horror books slash movies ever made. Right. So yeah, you don't always need a ghost. But yeah. yes, if we can uh, use horror to convey a social message. or if you can bring a change like in this i've yeah. talked about politics the way yeah. media is being manipulated these are the things that we're living in this is the present this yeah. is the reality this is the yeah. oh, i don't know black mirror white mirror but this is a mirror yeah. i'm showing you right i don't know which side you are on, you are on or which side i am on but yeah. this is the reality we are being manipulated and yeah. that is also kind of a horror because you're made to believe what may actually be not true so yeah. those are the things that you know uh, uh, that has to be explored in future by other horror writers as well which i'm sure they are doing horror of climate change horror now because corona happened everybody start yeah. you know starts talking about zombies and the uh, post apocalyptic world the dystopian yeah. future and all those things which yeah. was kind of absent in our space it was there in the world war z brad pitt brad yeah yeah but here suddenly people started talking but again right. that's what it's not all, always about ghost boots spreads pishaj yakshis and all those things yes. it's much more than that it's much and much fact, more yeah in fact people have evolved also i mean not everybody is looking at uh, i mean jump scares because that's the feedback i get i recommend a book or a movie to someone and then they call me back and say what were you talking about we, we were not scared so i was like okay, okay it's fine it's fine so i suppose it goes back to the thing you said that you can't satisfy sort of you can't write for everyone i suppose you can't but see that that's a see again uh when i go to see a movie i'm not going to see a horror movie unless really i'm i'm really in that mood but otherwise i'm going to see yeah. a story i'm going yeah. to see the character yeah so for me that if that is engaging that is captivating then i'm hooked otherwise no matter what you write or what you show on the screen the reader or the audience will uh, get bored so which is what uh, happened with conjuring 3 yeah <laughs> let's let's talk about uh, harper a little bit because i mean of course the editors there are equipped to handle all sorts of books i suppose but uh, with horror it is i mean one of the tougher genres i suppose because uh, along with perhaps humor uh, it is quite tough to you know pull it off uh, do editors kind of uh, pitch in with their two cents how does that work uh, or it's just you see uh, i think uh, harper collins is actually one of those publishers who kind of are promoting horror literature in india okay. i have to be open about they've got plenty of books at least they are getting four to five books in this particular genre every year at least since the last 3 4 years yeah and uh, and yes uh, we i mean this one is a commission project so that means yeah. there is an interest in horror there is an interest oh, in getting right. horror out there for yeah. the readers yeah. yeah and we are kind of building that audience and it's not right. just up because there are other publishers as well but i think yeah. that's a very great that's a great service the publisher is doing to this particular right. genre but right. as writers we are also trying to make sure that it's not just horror the Uh, like you mentioned yeah. the old school or the jump scare horror that we're sticking to there's something more even if you're sticking to that there is something more yeah great so yeah so, that's what is happening so yes yeah. from the and uh, i think uh, the editors have done a wonderful job my editor especially uh, she has she's absolutely been with me since india's most haunted and uh, yeah. uh, you know my first draft is a mess okay and <laughs> okay. to be honest every writer's first draft is supposed to be a mess but then yeah. i kind of revised it five times then i sent it to the uh, to my editor and 
she came back with amazing feedback to make the story better and as a writer it was i had to put myself in a in a in a spot where i can judge it very correctly neutrally yeah. and yeah. take what is correct and most of it was correct so that means they know yeah. the audience they know who who is going to read the book and that yeah. they are also happy after reading the book awesome awesome that it was a commission project i didn't know that of course how would i know it but uh, it's amazing that it's the other way around because mostly we sort of think that you know writers you know send the manuscripts and you know how that's how it works no, it, was but it, comes... a, it was obviously a proposal that i had sent it's not like it, yeah. I, I, okay, it was okay. a proposal it was yeah. one of yeah. the uh, proposal that i had sent which really appealed to the, uh, the commissioning editor and that's how we proceeded with that but i had the i had the entire story in my head when i was proposing that it was oh, not like okay. See, that's the advantage of being a screenwriter. You always have a Bible in your head. You yes, always have yes. you always have your entire story in your head. So you're telling, you're narrating the story. This is what my story is all about. See, if it interests yes. you, then yes. let's proceed with that. Obviously, the draft which comes afterwards, you know, after yeah. because that at that time there was no research, nothing. It was just a basic idea. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's how it was. I'm, I mean, I'm really, yeah. I'm really grateful. I'm really thankful to Harper Collins for getting this book out. Yeah. And the next um, one as well. Oh, yes. Uh, can you name? Oh, of course. Of course. Can, uh, can you uh, tell us, like, uh, are there some books that you have read off late, uh, which kind of influenced? Uh, of course, you have mentioned one or two. But uh, growing up, any recommendations for the book uh, lovers? Uh, yes. yes. You know, yeah. Growing up, since you mentioned growing up, yes. uh, we used to have this... Uh, uh, a magazine called Chanda Mama. I don't know. You might remember. I know. I know. I know. You know. I, know. I mean, Chanda Mama yeah. had amazing stories. Vikram Vetal yeah. and all those creepy yeah. pictures and all. I mean, that's what I grew up with. I grew up with that. I grew up with Scooby Doo's and all those things. And uh, recently, I read uh, this book by Vikram uh, uh, Paralkar. It's called Wounds of the Dead. It's one of the. Yeah. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful story. Again, it's not your yeah. usual uh, horror story. Right. But it has very creepy elements and very, I mean, it's funny in a way. I mean, if you read it, you'll enjoy it. I mean, if you haven't read it. Yes. So try Wounds of the Dead. It's an, it's a, I, I would recommend that book. It's about uh, a surgeon in a, in a, in a Maharashtra village who suddenly uh, encounter, you know, encounters a dead family. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. And the family is asking him to, you know, stitch them up. Their bodies are all cut open. So it's oh, really see. creepy and a lot of philosophical questions that's being asked there. Wow. So, yeah, it, it's an enjoyable What an idea. Book. What an idea. And it's a Harper Collins book. I'm not oh, sure. Wonderful. 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 So we look forward to reading that. Yeah. yeah, you should. You should. It's an amazing book. Then there is uh, Alisha Kirpulani's book that I really enjoyed uh, that came last year. Uh, there were short stories and um, mostly about uh, it's about the encounters of the Ramsey family, an interesting yeah. book. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, those are the books that I read recently. And other than that, I've been uh, working on a screenplay. So it was more about watching than reading. Oh, yes. Yes. And there are other four books yeah. that I'm reading right now, but they're all uh, subject books, academic books, okay. abnormal okay. psychology, <laughs> and all those things. Oh, yes. Uh, there are so many psychological elements in here. Guys, you have to read the book, uh, buy it from a bookstore. Uh, is it available? Uh, around Delhi NCR and uh, these it areas? It should be. I mean, yeah. At least I, I think it's uh, it's available now. Uh, from okay. December 5th onwards, it's uh, people have started sending uh, pictures of, you know, okay. bookshelves awesome. and all. It's, it's there. I found it I found it in uh, Select City in Saket. So hmm. that... Yeah, you had. But yeah. Uh, are you in Delhi right now? I thought you were somewhere... No, no I'm in Dune. I'm in Dune actually. Okay, you were travel, traveling. Yes, I was traveling and yeah. <laughs> so yeah. You probably awesome. should check the local bookstore there. I mean. Ah, I should. I should. If it is not here, I'll of course, you know, uh, make it a point to, you know, uh, let the publisher know that it should be here. Yeah. Because otherwise people will be missing out on some horror. We love our horror in Deradun, by the way. Because yeah, uh, our very own Ruskin Bond also writes Ruskin Bond horror. is there, yeah. And it's pretty famous. I mean, last time when I uh, uh, gave... Uh, during the launch of India's Most Haunted in uh, Gurgaon, yes. uh, one of the uh, one of the audience members they were asking about you know Ruskin Bond and have you met him? Have you gone to Dune? Mm -hmm. There's a bookshop where he sits every Sunday. And I was like, no, I I'm know. not. I, I haven't been that fortunate. 
I mean, it's, it would be great. It would be great. Yeah. Huh? Have you been here? Have you been to Masur? No, no, not yet. I have to. Yeah, I have to. I love hill stations. I love, you know, the foggy weather. I love fog. Oh, yeah. I love rain. You know, every time yeah, there is. You can mystery. write. You can write a complete trilogy about you know this area. I this area. trust right. me. There is. There are so many haunted places. Also, there is uh, Lumbi Dehar mines, Lumbi which Dehar. a lot of right. people have right. you know explored. Yeah. But uh, explored and of course there is. Uh, the what do you call the five star hotel i keep forgetting the name uh, savoy the savoy savoy yeah yeah right, right. <laughs> so there are many places here so we of course would love uh, you if that you come here and you know kind of find a story here as well write about this area there are so many I things you know that are happening or maybe set up a web series there like we set oh, it up you know, set up brahm in yeah. shimla yes yes so, why not minutes. It was just an amazing place. I mean, Shimla, Chell, that's the places where we shot Brahm. And, you know, I mean, it was just amazing. I mean, Chell, you especially. You know what happened? What, what happened with Brahm? I watched the trailer. I watched Kalki. I, I, I thought I'll watch it definitely. I mean, I, I mean, of course, for me, Kalki comes first. Sorry about that. But <laughs> so, no, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even so, for us, to be honest. And I, <laughs> and I forgot you know, to watch it. And I forgot to work it. That's the reason why commerce always takes preference over art and literature and everything. Because, you know, that, that was a face of the particular thing. Otherwise, I mean, Brahm is just Brahm. And that's the reality. I'll watch it now. It. I'll watch it now. I, I, I missed it. That's the point. I mean, I, I will go back and watch it uh, to uh, know more about your work. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Amazing Thank you time. so much for Thank having you. me here. And it was wonderful. And guys, and- yeah, and uh, of course, uh, let's show uh, them the book cover once more so that they can identify it when they, you know, find it. And not uh, just I horror, think... even thriller fans should definitely read this because it's a horror slash thriller. I know. Very I know. thin area, you know. Can you show them the hard cover? Uh, because yeah, I, I don't have it here. Yeah. So this is the cover. Yeah. As you can see. Uh-huh. It's a story. Just of a find woman. the girl. Yeah, just find the girl when you. <laughs> yeah, and you know some mist with some mist. Yeah. Um, and the cover is cover. Yeah. Awesome. See, that's awesome. the thing. I mean, horror. Ka, when you mentioned earlier, no horror. A lot of people don't read horror because they think that they are you know that they are scared. Yeah, that's what mm-hmm. they say. We are scared. That's why we don't read or read. But read. That's why I say that it's not horror. It's a thriller. Read. प्रॉब्लम तो नहीं आएगी मैं तो मतलब हार्ड कोर हॉर फैन हूँ तो आई आई ऑफकोर्स इट अलॉट एंड रिकमेंडेड टू एवरी वन पढ़ना ही है एंड गेट इट फ्रॉम एमेजॉन वेर एवर यू कैन गेट इट सो एंड लीव योर रिव्यूज लीव योर रिव्यूज प्लीज ऑन एमेजॉन एंड एल्सवेयर एंड ऑफकोर्स हरी इज ऑन फेसबुक एंड इंस्टाग्राम यू कैन रीच आउट टू हिम देर एज वेल थैंक यू थैंक यू हरी <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much you. for having me.